We had a really interesting team of young men headed by our next interview. We were, it was a very, it was a very special group that's near and dear to my heart. We really played an aggressive style of basketball. Um, we blurred the line between being Christian and non-Christian, both with our <laughs> language and with our conduct on and off the court. However, we had a lot of fun. And we really had a uh, bond and a brotherhood that has lasted, you know, many years later. I mean, we're all adults now and older. And, uh, you know, we still, you know, keep in touch and still very good friends. So I'd like to introduce Terrell Harrison, my captain from the 2005 Ephesus Warriors basketball team. How's it going, Terrell? Oh, man, doing great, doing great. How about yourself, man? I'm doing pretty good. It's been a while since we talked. How's uh, how things going in Columbus? Man, this weather, unpredictable, just like the weather, unpredictable. Yeah, Anything is likely to happen. I'm out in yeah. Seattle. It's it's 80 degrees and hasn't rained in about a month and a half, so you just really never know. Um, wanted to talk to you, Terrell, kind of about your experience. If you could give some background on our relationship and, and just how how did you end up playing? You know, you don't have a – you're not a Seventh-day Adventist. No. You didn't grow up in the Adventist church, but you had an opportunity to kind of play basketball with the Ephesus Warriors basketball team in Columbus. How did that come to fruition? Well, um, I could say that was that was actually pretty, a pretty spontaneous event. Um, I was just I was just out with a couple of friends who just come back from playing. Actually, we just got done from playing football, and we were approached by another individual that's mutual between me and you asked us to come out play against his um scrimmage against his basketball team and he'll give he'll just we'll see from there to try out for the basketball team and we went out it was actually funny though because we um we went when we went out to play we was just just playing just like we normally play when we're playing not, a, not an SDA individual. What did you see as far as Christ-like behavior? I mean, how was your experience, you know, coming into a different church? How do you feel that you were treated? You know, was it a good spiritual experience? Did um, was, you have a chance to juxtapose, you know, your personal church life with your family, with some of the stuff we were doing at Ephesus? I mean, it was the the that whole that whole thing was just was just great. It was beautiful. I mean, I was welcomed with open arms. I was there every Saturday, mm-hmm. you know, even before even before the rule was implemented where we was mm-hmm. actually supposed to come and show up at church before the games and such, like how it would be in high school where you would have to attend and dress up and wear your button up and your tie and such a day of the game and such. Mm-hmm. You know, it was it was beautiful. I mean, I'm happy that I have I have, you know, experience this you know because even even at my own church we i mean we were we were very organized but we didn't have enough to be able to pull um to do things of that nature so i mean with when i was asked to come and play i mean it it made it it just made it all the better it made me want to go to church even more out even outside of just you know being a faithful christian that i am you know it was just I made more friends that way and I I I have an I have basically I have more of an extended family by doing um uh, by going to that church and and seeing how they live their life and such with no meets before sun um uh, from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday evening and such I mean it was it was a whole different experience that I had to adjust to that I had to learn and it was it was good because like My style is impetuous, my defense is impregnable, I'm just ferocious, I want your heart. You are listening to the Lance Day Radio Show on Advent Sports Network. I'd 
day where we won the championship in um, you know versus our hated rival Pittsburgh in 2005. What happened that day, and what you know? How did how did your teammates support you? You know, through a rough situation that you had gone through. Well, 2005. It was it was it was a good year, but it gotten it had gotten tough in the beginning in the first half of the year. I mean, my grandmother she did she went through a quadruple bypass heart surgery, was in nursing homes, back and forth home. She was home. She she actually was home. Say March into May, and. She ended up passing away on Mother's Day, the, the Sunday right before our championship game, mm. and that's bad. That's crazy because tomorrow is actually Mother's Day, mm. and it was it was it was really it was it was really hard. It was really hard for me. It was a really I'm tough sure. and trying time. I and, remember, man. It was it was it was just tough it was really bad for me to be home i didn't i didn't want to be at home i didn't want to go to school i mean because it's just it was just plaguing me mm. you know it was just it was just like a, 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 a just terrible utter just terror in my brain that she was gone and mm. every time i would go home i would just want to see her face you know and i i actually survived the week and came Saturday, it was the day of the funeral, day of the game. And, you know, I was just in the church, just, I was just hurt, lost, didn't know what to do because, like, she was all I knew. Mm -hmm. And I just, I mean, I just so happened, you know, I'm looking around, looking at everybody, all the family members in the church and then everybody she knew. And just amongst the people, I just see, you know, G, Girardi, Franchise, Steven, and you come in, and it was just, it was just, you know, it just made me feel so that much. Your teammates and your coach came to your grandmother's funeral. So yes, what you're yes, okay, yes. They showed, they showed up. They was there at the church and everything. You know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't go and. I couldn't just go to the burial site. Like, it was just, it, it was heavy, mm -hmm. you know. And me personally, I was not wanting that. I was not wanting to go to the game. And you, being my coach at the time, you you had you did say if I didn't want to go, I can stay here with my family. And I, right, me, I reply and I say, nah, she would have wanted me to go anyway. So mm -hmm. let me just. We went, grabbed my gear, mm -hmm. and we took that ride, and it was just silence. It we didn't say silence. a word. We rode all the way to Cleveland from Columbus, which, for those listening to the Lance Day Radio Show, is about a two-and-a-half-hour drive. No one in the car said anything at all during that ride. Man, what I, happened I when we got it. to the game? We got to the game. <laughs> That was actually that was actually the best part of the day because mm -hmm. it actually got my it got my blood flowing. I knew we was going to face Pittsburgh mm -hmm. championship game, and it's already got me it's already got me amped. We ain't say nothing the whole ride. We already knew what we was going to do when we, when we jumped in the car. We already mm -hmm. knew what we was going to do. Got up there, we we're in the locker room still in complete silence. Everybody came and embraced me, showed love, gave condolences and everything for my grandmother's passing and everything, and it was very beautiful. And I appreciate and, that. And we and we cried family. as a team. We cried together as brothers. Yes, we did as brothers. Um, and what what happened in the game? <laughs> Who won the game? But before that, before that though, let's get let's get into detail about this. Okay. Before after that, you know, we had our word of prayer. Hmm. This team is in the other. This team, we actually shared a team with the other locker. I mean, to share the locker room with the other team. Excuse mm -hmm. me. And 
we're just listening to them beatboxing on the lockers, saying how they're going to beat us, rapping about how they're going to destroy us and beat us and tear us up and this and that. They're going to walk with the trophy and everything. Like, man, nah, we ain't going to have that. Right. This warrior basketball, this is our year. Mm. We don't got no home. We already home. We done made it through the playoffs. We in the championship. We're going to take that trophy. And we're going to bring it back to our gym. We're going to bring it back to our castle. And we're going to show everybody we the kings. Mm. That game was long. That game was, it was brutal. It was fought hard just like the rest of the season that that showed that we were supposed to be in there. Even the season before that even showed that we were supposed to be in there. We fought hard. We showed that we had major heart out there on the court, on and off the court. Absolutely. And ultimately, you know, the Epsis Warriors prevailed. Um, you had the chance, you know, your team voted you the most valuable player um, just yeah. because you were able to show up. And, you know, as a coach, you know, talking to you, I'm talking to you as a radio host now, but as a coach, it made me so proud of you, Terrell, to see you be the leader of our team, even though you didn't feel up to going out scoring 20 points having a huge game, you know, scoring yeah. the most points, getting the most rebounds. It's just the fact that you showed up knowing what you were going through with your family. When our team saw you come through those doors, they looked at each other and they said, we're going to win this game regardless of what happens. We were willing to lay everything out on the court. We were willing yeah. to literally physically fight if we had to to win that game. And we won that game for you. So, you know, ten years later – I want to thank you for just being such a great leader and being a part of our team. But for our audience out there, just kind of summarize, you know, just give us a summary of, of just what was the experience like playing. It seems like years later you have, you know, that brotherhood, that deeply rooted sentiment for yes. those times. I can even hear you get choked up when you're talking about it. What yes. has it meant to you just being a part of the Ephesus Warrior Basketball Nation and just kind of playing in the seven day I've been this basketball league. How has it impacted your life? Honestly speaking, you know, that if I did not show up, if I turned if I would have just turned my neck and said no, honestly I wouldn't even know where I would be right now. Wow. Because that's a that's a chunk of me. That's a chunk mm-hmm. of me. And those are, I mean, these these are really close people to me now. You know, I don't even, I wouldn't even know, I wouldn't even have the, I wouldn't even have the knowledge that I even have right now. I mean, I, I, I even, I did a lot. I've coached basketball. I done mentored kids. I done turned, I done turned people from doing dealing drugs and going to jail having a life of crime and then going to school and I ain't even and me personally I ain't even completed my own college uh, my own college courses mm-hmm. you know I have a lot of role models that I have been able to actually like show the right path to you know that show me that show me the way to go you know I have I have very key people in my life that I'm very happy to know right now Mm-hmm. You being one, you know, I, it's, it's, it, I, the experience, the, the experience was just nothing less than legendary and epic and great to me. And I would cherish that for the, until the day that I die. My kids will probably end up, my kids will mess around and go to that church and be adjusted to that lifestyle as well as Christian Christianity. Wow. You know, that, well, that, that was... Little- it's a major part of me. That is a really powerful testimony, Terrell. We are glad to have you on the Lance Day Radio Show. Thank um, you. You know, I love you personally. You are my brother, my baby bro. Um, yes, I'm always here for you. you. It's always good to talk to you, and, and we look forward to keeping in touch with you in the future. Please do. Thanks, man. All right. <laughs>